Good evening. In this service, we remember two pivotal events. In the last uh, week of, uh, last night of Jesus' life, on the day before his death, Jesus and his disciples gathered in the upper room for a last meal together. And throughout his ministry, Jesus had taught his disciples by example of what it meant to be a servant to others, to humble oneself so that others might come to know God. And so before they sat down to share in the last meal, Jesus knelt down before his disciples and washed their feet. And when he was finished, he gave them a final commandment, which was to love one another. The Latin word for command is mandatum. And so it is from this commandment to be of service that we get the name for this day, Monday, Thursday. And so remembering that deed of kindness and service, we will participate in a ritual of hand washing. And the way that we will do this is that you will come down as you do, or as we used to do for communion, as we're going to do tonight. You will come down, and the choir is going to come first from the back. You'll come over to uh, one of the hand washing stations, and you'll hold your hands over the bowl. The person in front of you will take water and pour it over your hands, And then Carolyn or I will hand you um, a napkin for you to dry your hands. You come around then and replace the person who washed your hands and be prepared then to uh, serve the person behind you. The last person will then, uh, in the line, will uh, wash my and Carolyn's hands. After this ritual of servanthood, we will continue then to remember the events of the night of the Last Supper. For on that night, Jesus hosted his friends, and in a meal, he fed them both physically and spiritually. He gave them bread, and he gave them wine, and then he gave them himself. And so tonight, we remember the last meal with thanksgiving and gratitude that Jesus continues to set a place for every person at this table. We will receive communion at the front here. We'll come, uh, you'll come forward in a single line. Greg will be standing at the aisle with some bread, and he will use tongs and place that into your hands, which you may uh, take and eat it, and then come and take a cup of uh, communion juice. And there's a receptacle here that you can put that in before you uh, return to your seat. Following the sacrament of Holy Communion, our Lenten journey then moves to the, from the table to the cross as we read the account of Christ's crucifixion. And during that time, following that time, the altar is stripped of all adornment. The room will then go dark for a moment, and then we will conclude the service as we all leave in silence. And so on this holy night, let us prayerfully be mindful of the power and the mystery of these events as we begin worship together. Let us stand and sing, What Wondrous Love Is This, number 292.
God is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? God is the strength of my life. Whom shall I dread? Trust in God, stand fast, and have courage. Help us this night not to fall away. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and give us the courage to withstand. Please be seated. My brothers and sisters, Christ shows us his love by coming to us as a humble servant. Let us draw near to God and confess our sin in light of Christ's spirit. Let us pray together. Most merciful God, we, your church, confess that often our spirit has not been of Christ, where we have failed to love one another as he loves us, where we have pledged loyalty to him with our lips and then betrayed, deserted, or denied him. Forgive us. By your spirit, make us faithful in every time of trial. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Therefore, people of God, we are assured that our sins are forgiven and we are brought to new life in Christ. Thanks be to God. We give thanks for the many blessings in our lives and we offer back a portion of those blessings with our gifts and tithes.
Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. And Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. And Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet, for I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me and as I've said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. From the earth you bring forth bread and create the fruit of the vine. You formed us in your image, delivered us from captivity, and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and gave grapes to evidence the promised land. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. When we had turned aside from your way and abused your gifts, you gave us in him your crowning gift. Emptying himself that our joy might be full, he fed the hungry, healed the sick, ate with the scorned and forgotten, washed his disciples' feet, and gave a holy meal as the pledge of his abiding presence. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, drink from this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the great mystery of faith. your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Let us now share in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Because there is one loaf, we, though many as we are, are one body, for it is from one loaf which we all partake. When we eat this bread, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? And likewise, the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God are ready.
Let us join in the prayer of dedication as uh, is printed on the screen. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him. And with him two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. And Pilate answered, what I've written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says, they divided my clothes among themselves and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus was his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. 